guys up guys Warlock Spool back here and today uh i know i said it was under the guide i know i said i wasn't gonna sleep until it's done kind of still the plan it's just that i want to make sure to get a video out today you know i hate missing uploads and uh for that reason i have to record sadly another video on dead man's Hand. i mean unless you enjoy these then it might be happy but uh yeah i currently have all the audio recorded it's a lot of fucking audio and it's taking forever to fucking edit down so with the biggest part done being writing the script and recording i should be able to get it out tomorrow um so yeah look forward to that this is a promise that it will be out tomorrow i will definitely not sleep until it's done and uploaded tomorrow even though that might fuck me in the ass but uh yolo right <laughs> is that thing speed yeah nah. anyway so with all that being said uh let's jump right into the first game right guys i'll see y'all there Oh, it's a warlock. Okay, so there's the highest odds is that it's... What's that deck called? Um... Fuck, I can't think of the name of the deck. Uh, Dark Lair Zoo? So, for the zoo matchup, uh, you're looking for removal. I don't want to talk about too much about mulligans because there's an entire section in my guide dedicated to that. So, yeah. Oh, uh, this is pretty okay. That's really good. That's insane, actually. The important part with Barov is that, theoretically, if I do survive to turn 6, um, or even turn 4 if I draw Risky Skipper, um, it just wins the game. Possibly if I wipe two Giants and I wipe a Dark Lair, I doubt he's able to come back. Okay. So, yeah, that's 100% Dark Lair. The fact that he's using cards that damage himself now is kind of good for me. Uh, I don't want to play Dirty Rat because that can lead to a variety of problems. Cold Light Oracle also you don't really want to play until a little bit later unless you can guarantee burn two cards. In which case, the reason that's not a problem is if you can guarantee burn two cards. It's because you have to look at it this way. He's going to be drawing that card, the top card anyways, right? Also, yeah, Accolade of Pain here makes sense. So yeah, if, he's, if you know, say he's going to draw two cards, right? Or he's going to draw a card anyways. He's at nine cards. If I play Cold Light Oracle, he's going to draw this card anyways on his turn. So I'm just burning the next two cards in reality. So it makes 100% sense in almost any matchup to play your first Cold Light Oracle to burn a card. I think I call them Cold Light Seer, but it's Cold Light Oracle. I've played a little bit of Battlegrounds today. I'm sorry. Anyways, before we get too much further into the game, I hope y'all have a drink. You know me. Always got that beverage. Always got to be getting that beverage. Can never not have a beverage because that's that's crazy talk to me. Um, so yeah, I got me some uh, scotch, I think this is. See, there's, uh, no, bourbon. I'm retarded. Uh, so yeah, I hope y'all also have a drink to go with my bourbon. Again, if you're not over your legal drinking age, don't drink. It's not cool. It doesn't make you cool. Kind of makes you an asshole, honestly. But hey, he is... Unless he coins out another one drop, I'm like super ahead right now. I burn two cards. Oh, I have to pick between burning two cards and I have to kill this. Yeah. And I gotta draw three cards off that, which is kind of insane. That's a dead card here, but hey. The big thing is, so we knew he was playing this here. It was clear that he was going to be playing that. Let's tap. Alright, so we tap at the end, I guess. Okay, that's weird, but fine. That's fine as well. That's kind of weak. Shield Slime would be probably the best draw in my deck. Brawl is also pretty good. Brawl, worst case scenario, leads him up with a 3-4. Yeah, Brawl is... I can no longer call that Oracle to burn him probably for the rest of the game. But looking at my hand, I think I win here. Oh, best case scenario. Let's fucking go. No, but why I'm saying looking at my hand, I probably win here. If he floods the board with small things... First of all, he has no more, no more ways to generate infinite mana with Dark Lair. And all that bullshit. 
If he floods the board, I have dark whis um, I have dry whiskers, and if he doesn't, I have cartooth defender this turn, so block both of these hits. And then afterwards, both these are damage. I mean, I drew this here, but the thing is, I could always play this, and then I have Kargith, which would be able to kill this, or if this is already dead, kill this. So I'm like stupid far ahead, and killing it gains me ten health. So, yeah. I think the fact that I've dealt with both Dark Glares kind of means I'm in the clear. Yeah. Also, in matchups like this, when you're playing against a super aggressive deck, uh, just telling you ahead of time, it is possibly correct just to run out the Nazoth early game. I know that sounds insane to say. Like, why the fuck would you ever do that? That doesn't make any sense type play. But trust me, it is occasionally correct to do that play. The other hand, this hand right now, kind of fucking blows, huh? 16, 17, 18, that's a lot of fucking damage. Okay. So I went from saying that I won this 100% to I might lose this here. But, um, I want a dirty rat, I think. The odds of it being another giant is very low. Yeah, that's really, really good. I can do this. Game 8. And I can do this. So that sets the main ones down lower. So I can always trade this away. I arguably should have played this first. Or played this first, yeah. But because now this just trades into here and I still take the 18 damage. So I'm at 10. Thing is, next turn, he's probably playing one or two things here. This trades away, kills everything. Then this gets played and kills something else. If I kill every if I kill something else and I gain another 10 health, I'm up to 20 health, which is still super, super fine against aggro, and it's a minion he has to deal with. And if not, if there's a whole bunch of shit and I don't think I'd be able to survive safely, it's always trade in Barov, kill off the entire board or deal one damage to the entire board, then plague, and then I win. Also, I could theoretically, if I am gonna be playing the plague, I might just dead man's hand right away. Because my game plan here is not necessarily to win through infinite dead man's hands. My game plan is to survive and then he'll eventually just mill himself to deck because he's at 11 health. And I have cold light oracles. So. Okay. So yeah, like see here I can do this, this, trade off the entire board and I can develop Garrosh for free. Okay, that's even more fine, I guess. Let's still just do this. Do this, hit with Kargith, and he... Yeah. That's his last threat, so... Yeah, I like the Kargith. Uh, this is better. The reason this is better, and I'm not dead man standing first, is because he still has a life after death, so that's two more big minions, possibly. It could be two more giants. To be fair, it could also be two tour guides. Um, I don't think he has 12 damage burst in his deck. He has one soul fire left that can go face, I believe. There's the raise dead. Hopefully he only hits one giant. I mean, hopefully he hits zero giants, but odds are he hits one. Don't be divine shield. That was the one I told you not to be, but oh well. Hmm. I have a lot of possible plays here. I think this one is just the best, though, overall. This gained 10. Yeah. Gaining 10 here, because I don't have a way to proc this, gaining 10 here is very, very important. If he hadn't played Flesh Giant last turn, I was fine. But due to him playing Flesh Giant last turn, I had to Plague, so I couldn't have just play the Scourge Lord. Which kinda sucks. This would've been really nice to have Plague here, possibly. But, oh, I can't even have damage this, what am I saying? I think I'm still super far ahead. I'm at 22. Okay, so he hit one really dead card. He doesn't, I guess he, he kind of has to be drawing cards. He only plays one uh, enhanced soul mechanic or mechanism, whatever the fuck this card's called. So, yeah. 
This is hitting here almost for sure. Yep. Three cards. He's drawing two next turn. Hopefully he draws some more cards, actually. So far. Not even. Okay. Hmm. If I had Bran, he was dead. Fun fact. I can draw Bran, theoretically. How many cards can I draw that are broken here? A lot. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go for this. Yeah, both of those are kind of garbage. Mm. There we go. Okay. So now he has soul fire. I don't think he's able to kill me at 34. And he's two turns away from death. So as long as I survive for two turns, I'm fine. So yeah, I'm pretty sure I win from here. That's fine. Let's go on face with everything. My boy's a greedy boy. He should hit face with the last one, then soul fire my face possibly. So these guys get bounced, so he has two more abilities. One to shoot here. One to shoot my face most likely. Or he's just gonna kill himself as he realized he lost. Get shit on, kid. <laughs> oh, that's such a dirty draw. Oh my god. That was such a dirty draw here. Uh, feels good to win this matchup. Feels really fucking good. I'm pretty sure the last cards in his hand were either Broomstick or, like, it was a combination of Broomstick, Soulfire, Spirit Bomb, and uh, Amethyst Spellstone, I believe. Or possibly Ascense Demons, but I doubt it. Uh, it always feels good to shit on Dark Glare when you know exactly what they're going to do every single step of the way. That game wasn't even close, to be fair. Like, I know it, I was at 10 health or whatever, but the game was not even close. Uh, I need to update that win rate, you know what I'm saying? Um, anyways, with that being said, that really, really solid game, uh, let's queue up the next one, alright guys? I'll see y'all there. Okay, Mage is most likely secret at this point. I think Quest is just bad because I think you lose to Priest almost every single time. So, assume that it is secret. I'm going to keep a Shield Slam because I think Shield Slam could be really fucking good in this matchup. Possibly helping you kill something that kind of either needs to be killed or uh, it could help proc various different secrets. Double Dead Man's Hand already. Hands like this, by the way, are fucking terrible. You don't want to see both of these this early on. Because they're two dead cards until, like, turn 10. Risky Skipper is also a really solid draw. I like playing this here. Yeah. So playing this just saved me 3 health. Sure, I put a 2-3 on the board, but it still can't kill my 2-6. Most importantly, though, it saved me 3 health. The logical place to trade in your Mad Scientist first here, by the way. If you're playing his deck. Yeah, okay. The reason that's the better play for him is because he gets to have all the information possible during his turn out right now. So if he knows that, okay, this is, say, uh, Duplicate, and he doesn't want to dupe this, he won't attack. So my guess is now that this is Duplicate. We can test for Counterspell. Test for Explosive Runes. Proc your duplicate. See, knowing what your opponent's plan is ahead of time is super important playing this. Sure, he has two of those now, where it's probably going to be... He can't even play either of them yet. He has to wait an extra turn. So if he develops a secret here, I can test for it. And then me testing for it can just prevent him possibly from playing these until next turn. And then he only has to play... Then he only gets to play one. Right? To be fair, if it's Ice Block, I can't proc it but i can test for all the other ones if he plays uh, develops another minion with it so i can proc it with shield slam so i don't want to just throw away dead man's hand that kind of seems like a death wish best card to draw here is accolade of pain or battle rage uh just because you need to be drawing cards um sitting with just five cards in hand two of which are dead one of which is only good if you draw the accolade of pain uh, armor dirty rat or the ethereum rover is kind of bad so drawing um, or Barov, I guess. Barov is also a super sick... I fucking love that combo. I was having a hard time 
not cutting Barov because this combo is so good. And it's like super good against something like Dark Blair, right? They flooded the board, and then if I just went Risky Skipper Barov, like he conceded on the spot. So, yeah. Um, battle Rage here would be fucking dope. Hopefully he hero powers me in the face, so this would battle rage shots me three, but I need it looks like he's roping me because he's getting cuck super hard. Because I know exactly what he's about to play every single turn. And I'm prepared to hear the innkeeper tell me your opponent left. That was the worst fucking I am fucking terrible at impressions, but that was next level bad. There we go. <laughs> My opponent just straight alt up. Like, I knew what he was doing before he even did it. He played... It took him three cards. I played three cards to get him to concede. And one of those was the coin. Or, leave. Uh, my guy's tilted. <laughs> he's, 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 he's tilted out of this fucking world. Uh, that's beautiful. Uh, so, with that fake game out of the way... <laughs> So sometimes when I play this deck and my opponents concede or leave the game on turn four, I feel like, did that game actually just happen? Or it makes me feel like I'm faking this somehow. But I'm, I assure you, I'm not. I'm not win trading. I don't know who your opponent is. But um, yeah, I guess we just queue up the next one. I right, guess I'll see you guys there. Is this the same guy? They both had golden mage portraits. No, it's not. Sadly, uh, Finley is not for this matchup, so we don't need to keep it. Ethereum Rover and Rissy Super are both very good cards. Um, they're not auto keeps, but they are a very, very good combination of cards. Again, assuming this is Secret Mage, he bought the left card in his hand, so you know it's Secret Mage. Rissy Skipper number two. Uh, it's an okay draw, but I. Uh, best draw is either Dirty Rat. Oh. I was going to say it's probably Dirty Rat. Um, Dirty Rat, the, okay, so the, one of the reasons why Dirty Rat is so fucking good is because it gets you so much info. Like, say if he didn't... Oh, is this, this is Control. Okay. We beat every single Control deck, so I'm not worried. I, I say we beat every single Control deck, but with very, very unlucky draws. Can I draw... Let this ooze. That would be the best card to draw here. Oh, I mean, Cargoth is not bad. This is no the no worst. I fucking love this card as well. Cargoth. So, a lot of people were actually asking me, like, oh, how would you make your deck more budget? Or, oh, is X card necessary? I would say in Hearthstone, not. Almost no cards are necessary unless you're playing, like, namesake decks, right? Dead Man's Hand is necessary to play Dead Man's Hand Warrior. Go figure. Why is there an unstable Google in this guy's control deck? Some things I will never have the answer for. But hey. Also, he should have probably pinged my face. The ghoul killed my guy with his death rattle. So pinging me in the face would have proxed one more armor. Which could have been useful because he probably plays Alex Straza since it is a mage. And for that, you want me to have as little armor as possible. But, hey. Um, so yeah, I would say in Hearthstone, like, except for namesake cards, no cards are necessary. So cards like Dead Man's Hand are not necessary. Or, sorry. Except for namesake cards, they're not necessary. Dead Man's Hand is necessary for this deck. 100%. This looks really weird, but Slam of this is 100% the right play in case he has Polymorph. Um... You don't want it to get full value. This way, there's still one of them going into my death pool. It's very, very important to do small things like that to optimize gameplay. Also, the three health in this matchup probably doesn't matter. Um, uh, okay... Some people, like, there's no point of playing anything here. I don't know what this guy's playing. It seems very, very weird. It's probably some form of combo deck without quests, which makes me think it's a potion deck that wins off of 
uh, Sorcerer's Apprentice and fucking Tony. Tony is the Archmage Antonidas, for those who don't know. Okay. I was hoping he's going to keep more cards in hand, so this way these colored articles can do something. Cargath Prime. Yeah, I don't see why not. It's something that he has to answer. Can't just leave it up, because he takes 10 next turn. So this, this play kind of forces him possibly to dig for another card off of Sphere. Unless he already has an answer to it in hand, which my guess would possibly be Polymorph. Although, I would have Polymorphed Cargath initially. So, unless he drew it afterwards. Yeah, uh, dealing with Cargath is very, very fucking important, by the way. Okay, that's fine. 100% fine. It's not Highlander. Okay, so it's just Freeze Mage. Oh, with Freeze Mage for me? That's a really solid card, actually. I guess I just throw these cards. I don't want to throw those cards away. But at the same time, I feel like I kind of have to. I might draw Shield Slam, actually. Drawing three cards. Echo. And Lee. Dirty Rat could be insane. Pull something into this. What the fuck is he playing? Like, what in the actual fuck? Um, I guess, uh, I can't, I don't want to run out Akko. This is fine, I guess. We get this, whatever the fuck that's in his deck. Uh, if anybody knows what he's playing, tell me down below. Unless it's an OTK combo deck, I'm pretty sure we win. Solely based off the fact that our deck is designed to beat slower decks. It would have been really nice, though, to draw Gluttonous Ooze. Um... It's a little obnoxious. I'm actually kind of scared of... What's it called? Old Lord Oracle's in his deck. Also, I want to find another... Dead Man's Hand. Or not Dead Man's Hand, but uh... You know what I meant. Uh... What the fuck did I mean? Uh, I want to find uh, Cartoon Defender. And yes, at this point, another Dead Man's Hand as well as Nizoth. So, my. I pr okay. So, it's just Freeze Mage, I think. I think he gets cucked by the card um, Bulwark. Uh, My hand's really bad, and I feel like he is playing Jaina, so I don't want to just slam this. I guess slamming this is fine, then. This trades here, which is fine. I doubt he's playing Cold Light Oracle in a deck like that. It seems very anti-aggro with the Double Doomsayer, Explosive Sheep, Unstable Wool, Plated Beetle, Bone Wraith. It seems super, super, and too depth to charge. I feel like it's super, super uh, anti-aggro. We're basically a Doomsayer proxy, you just run Depths Charge into Depths Charge, into Sable Ghoul, into all that garbage. Uh, Garrosh would be super, super fire here. Dead Man's Hand. It's okay. Problem is, I don't want to shuffle any of this shit in yet, but I have to play something. Hmm. I don't really want to get rid of my armor hero power either. That was the weakest card in my hand. I can't play Acolyte because I burn a card. Um, he put two cards at the bottom of his deck. I can't play Dead Man's Hands. I don't want to shuffle all this stuff into my deck yet. Um, although, looking at the rest of my deck, most of these cards I can just play... Secret, my guess is that's Ice Block. Okay, Nazoth is a super, super solid card. Um, 
Just run this. This. I could play this, but I draw three cards off of it, which is kind of a problem. What would I have to do not to burn a card? Nothing. Oh, I guess I can do this right away. Change this to something slightly worse. I guess I could also just change mine for now. Uh, I guess I could take this. This allows me to play Akko here. This is really nice. Because it draws me a card. So now he can only make me draw one more, which would mean I'm at 9. Also, I can play Grizzled whatever freely. Because it no longer does anything. It gives him my hero power, which is the same thing as his. And the advantage of all this, unless I draw, oh, that's actually a really solid play too. Okay, that's slightly better though. Yeah, so that's ice block 100%. I'm curious of what his win con is. My guess is it's some form of OTK, which is making me want to hold off on playing this is I want to gain as much actually I'm no longer gaining armor so I could theoretically play that yeah like I these these are weird cards to me like I don't see any reason of why this would be in his deck it's like super anti-aggro and it's some form of freeze mage five If he has weapon removal, he's going to use it here. Which means I can develop Bulwark later on, and it'll be super safe. When he's much fewer cards left in his deck, I can develop Bulwark. The reason why that's going to be super good is because if it is an OTK deck, right? Say if it is Alex Straza into Burst You Down with spells, then Bulwark is going to block four of them. Which means he's enough to wait four more turns, because he'll have to probably hit me with this. This is really good, actually, because I can do this hit into Nazoth. So that hit is going to trigger my guy to die. And then Nazoth is just a free card to play. Did they change how that card works? They did. Oh no, Reborn triggers after Death Rattle, I guess, huh? Oh well. That's fine. This is like not the best, but it's okay. I've done as often in my deck. Uh, this is going to put another card get the Prime in my deck, which is an additional 10 armor. Oh, so it's just this into Potion. So it's the same deck we faced a while ago. So the thing is, his deck just doesn't do anything to our deck. So this is just a Resident Sleeper. Okay, this is actually kind of being good for us, weirdly enough. Play another one. Get three more copies. Beautiful. Beautiful. I say beautiful. I can trade this in, can trade this in, and hero power. Actually, probably not even hero power. Six cards. I can make him draw. Hopefully, I draw Dead Man's End here. Hmm. I mean, this is annoying, but I can pull the other one out of his hand. Possibly. That sucks. Yeah, this is fine. I'm giving him my hero powers. I actually want this stuff to die. Uh, because I do need to have some amount of open space because he's probably going to fill up his hand here. So for brand Cold Light Oracle, Cold Light Oracle, to burn uh, a whole bunch of cards. Because as soon as he draws his entire deck, he loses the game. It's the big thing. Cool, deal me six. Cool, get another potion. Actually, that's kind of annoying. It's a lot of six damages to my face. But as long as he continues just getting potion... I think you get potion hero power. 
My guess is hero power. He doesn't think I want him to hero power, but I actually do, kind of. Actually, those even open enough spaces, huh? Uh, no, that stays alive. That's important that this stays alive. So I can run this in, and then I can run the cartoot. Oh, no, he's just going face. I'm gonna get another potion? My man's actually insane. Okay. Actually, I get my hero power back. To be fair, I don't really want to use that, but... Yeah, so I'm gonna just burn the rest of his deck. So how do I get rid of the most amount of minions on my board as possible? Like that, like that. And then I can do this. Fuck, I'm gonna burn a card if I do that. I guess I can only play one here, sadly. This way I only burn one card. Okay, there goes that. There goes the blizzard. I didn't draw any of the cards I wanted to draw, sadly enough. Okay, that kind of sucks. Potion? There we go. Okay, now we possibly win. I don't know how many potions it takes place. He might have one. If he has one in hand, that's fine. He has two spells left. Theoretically, I'm... Oh, fuck, he sells a potion. That fucking blows. Okay. As long as I don't burn Nizoth or Dead Man's Hand, I'm fine. Okay. Okay. So now he's getting one Cloud Prince back. Yeah, he gets one Cloud Prince back because, if I'm not mistaken, it goes this way. You get two Cloud Princes back? Hero power is like OP here. He didn't even bother killing the brand, which is the part I don't understand. Or hero power me in the face of dealing an additional six. That's fine though. As long as I don't burn Dead Man's Hand here. Potion. We got three cards, so we got those three. That's fine. Um. Okay. So, first of all. Do this. Let's do this. to trade this away these can all go face i know i'm burning myself some amount of cards but i burned the rest of his deck which means he has no more infinite value i burnt to my dead man's hand didn't i i burnt bran there's there's like a one in Four cards I don't want to burn, but he dies to fatigue anyways before he can kill me. Uh, Bulwark is OP. <laughs> Doesn't matter how much value you get. You don't outvalue Bulwark when it comes to dealing damage. Or Nizoth when it comes to creating a board. That's a very interesting way to have that deck built. Um, with basically all aggro, or all anti-aggro cards, and then you win through infinite blizzards, infinite potions... Against a lesser deck that probably wins you the game every single time. Although that deck still hard loses, I think, to both Bomb Warrior, Odd Warrior, and possibly Priest. Uh, Priest is just faster than it, so that's the big thing. Mm. Anyways, with that being said, let's open some packs. Oh, sorry, I was just having a sip of my drink. Let's open some packs, uh, because then that's going to have to be it, because I have to both get back to editing. But I also have to edit this and upload this. So, yeah. Also, a pretty decent length video. We did really fucking good. All we did was get dubs. You know what I'm saying? To be fair, I was expecting to face a couple more priests. Because I really want to see how 
if pulling off the combo of tech cards actually just instant wins you the priest matchup i don't think it instant wins you it but it's re gets you really damn close also with the amount of tech cards i'm playing is like really really good for anti-priest anyways with all that being said i hope y'all enjoyed the video if you guys did don't forget to leave a like and subscribe rep the gang to get your box of cookies and i'll see you guys in the next one where it's the guide all right guys peace